Okay, so please excuse the mess. I was looking online and I was unable to find anything about putting trader valves in the 5160 series remote reservoir shocks from Bill Stein. So I figured I'd do it myself and show you guys it wasn't too bad at all for those who'd like to uh, be able to nitrogen service their own and uh, adjust the pressures and fine tune. So first to get the gas pressure out of here, you got about 200 pounds of nitrogen. Let's take a really small bit in here, find center, which you'll be able to see because of the machining of the cap. It's about a half inch thick total. Now, I've been pulling the bit out every now and again, cleaning it off, because the last thing I want to happen is that aluminum build up and snap the bit off in there. There we go. So see, not a whole lot of volume in there, so it's not like it hits you in the face hard or anything like that. So next thing I'm gonna do is take myself a 2164, 64th bit, and that's what a 1.8 MPT needs, so you can uh, run a tap in there. Sounds like my battery's getting down there after doing three of these. Okay. So next thing you want to do is just go ahead and clean off the aluminum shavings so you don't have to worry about them getting down inside the reservoir. Then grab yourself like a little dead blow. Tap that cap down in just a little bit. And remove the snap ring that uh, keeps it from coming out. Now the next part, sometimes it goes easy, sometimes it doesn't. Grab yourself some sort of uh, lubrication for that cap coming out because there's just an O-ring that seals it. And what I did, and it's worked half of the time, is I'll grab myself an air gun with the rubber end on it some gloves to keep my hands padded in case that cap decides to come out with some force. And I'll just pressure up the reservoir to try and pop that cap out. You can see that it gets stuck right where the uh, snap ring sits. Because it's not just perfectly straight. And sometimes it goes, sometimes it doesn't. You just got to keep working at it a little bit. And if it doesn't come, another thing I've learned is go ahead and put it all the way up to the top. Make sure you got a little pressure to have built up in there. Grab your tap. And go ahead and get it started just a little bit. The hardest part about the whole job is getting it started straight. kind of particular about it. Okay, now once you got enough down in there that you're not worried about it actually just pulling the threads, grab it and work it up a little bit. And once you get past that first lip, work the tap out, which can be a pain because the cap spins so easy now. Grab your air hose, air truck again, grab the gloves, and pop it out. There we go. Now, next step, I go ahead and turn the reservoir upside down with the air gun. Move out, get any of that aluminum out. I 
Now grab yourself a flashlight. Check in there, make sure you don't have anything left. The last thing you want is a bunch of aluminum shavings sitting in there, rubbing up and down inside and messing up the bore. <clears throat> so one way you can check, go ahead and push your shock down. It'll move that piston up for you. And turn it sideways. Pull it back up. Now let's pull that piston back up to the top. You can check again to make sure that no aluminum pieces load up, which there is one left up in there. Thing, just get this out of your way so you don't get it scratched up or damaged. Then you're going to go ahead and take the cap. I've been pulling the o ring off each time just to make sure I don't damage it. Grab yourself something to pad this with. Make sure you're running the tap the right way. You'll see where the snap ring sits here. So obviously you gotta run the tap in going that direction. Now, <clears throat> to start with, I go ahead and run it and clamp it very lightly like this. If you go too hard, you're gonna have some issues with bending the lips and you're gonna have to get yourself a new cap. So go ahead and get that tap started again. Like I said, this is, that's the hardest part, just making sure you get it in there straight. Okay, now once you got that done, you start it in there. Go ahead and pull off your handle. Check so your straightness again. Pad it up and clamp it sideways in the vise. This will keep it from messing up where the O-ring seats in. You don't have to worry about oblong in the cap in some way. Once you get to this point, just run the tap in. I don't think you need to learn how to do that. If you do, you probably shouldn't be doing this. Okay, so I want to show you guys real quick one thing to remember when uh, running that tap in. Make sure not to go too deep. The way these taps are angled, if you run it all the way through, you're going to have a nice, loose Schrader valve and it's not going to work. You're going to have to either bore it out to quarter, which I don't even know if they make a Schrader valve that thread, but just a heads up. Okay, now once you get the hole about where you think it needs to be. Go ahead and run the Schrader valve in. And make sure you're getting it only about maybe halfway to finger tight on the threads. That way you know it's getting seated in good and tight. If you can just run it in all the way by hand, it's, it's not good. You're not getting good uh, thread contact. The hole's been bored out too big with the tap. So instead of just running the tap all the way in real quick, just run it in till you're about probably up to here. Check that <clears throat> Schrader valve in there. If it doesn't go in over halfway, then go ahead and just bring it back a couple more threads. And just keep doing that until you, like I said, you get to that about half inch point. Then grab your wrench, your ratchet, and snug it up. Now, obviously, it doesn't have to be killer tight. You're going into aluminum and steel. And one thing mentioned as well, don't forget your Teflon tape on your threads, otherwise you're just going to lose your nitrogen. Okay. Next thing you want to do, put your O-ring back on your cap.
Go ahead and move it up again. Grab your shock. <clears throat> Now same thing going in. It can be a little bit snug with that O-ring. Just make sure you're getting it in straight. Now if you get to the point where it's just not going, <clears throat> go ahead and grab your dead blow. Find like a socket, something you can put over it that's not going to damage it. Here I've got just a little piece of brass. <clears throat> pop it in there. Now once you do that, you're going to snap this ring back in here. And that's all she wrote. You now have a serviceable Schrader style setup. Now before I cut out, I'm going to show you guys, just got this in from Power Tank. I'm definitely very pleased with the kit that they send out. It's a nice charging kit, the nitrogen. Bill Stein says between 200 and 250 PSI max is what they like to see these at. So, snug it up, go down, tank's already on. Stand back just in case you did something wrong. <clears throat> now I hope the video didn't turn out too long because I do not know how to edit or work on Jeeps, off road vehicles, not computers. So thank you for watching the video. I hope that it was informational and makes you feel a little less leery about putting Schrader valves into the Bill Stein remote reservoir shocks. Thank you.